Hi there, I'm trying with my Logitech webcam. This is C922 Pro Stream um, webcam and I have downloaded the XSplit vCam software just to see whether I can filter out the background and make it uh, blurry and some other features that I have tried. Now let me talk to you about the five part of the you know ASP.NET Core 3.1 series that I have spoken about. Now here in those five videos what I have discussed is that you know I have started with the new look project file in the ASP.NET Core 3.1 and after that um, we have actually discussed the um, trimmed version of the project file which actually contains just the core framework uh, ASP.NET Core framework and which uh, uh, automatically updates the project file from time and again depending upon what NuGet packages you add to the project. So it will and it has got rid of uh, all the uh, files that are that used to be form that used to be written uh, in the project file explicitly in the earlier versions of uh, .NET framework ASP.NET framework this is no more it is now a very trimmed version and after that we moved on to the startup file now the startup uh, after that we move to the program file now the program file is actually where the infrastructure for the asp.net core project is created now this project file is actually it contains it it runs it starts the asp.net core application as a uh, console application so it has got just like a .net console application which starts with the main entry uh, program as the main method and it also starts with the main method and it calls another method which actually returns the ihost builded object which actually creates the builds the host or the web host or web server on top of the console application through the generic host concept now this program file then it calls the startup file which is included in that method um, and then the startup file, once we come to the startup file, the startup file is a place where the application starts up. So it has got two main sections. First is the configure and another is the configure services section. So in the configure services section, that configure services section actually it configures all the framework services. You have to register the framework services as well as one or more of your own services in your application that you would like for data access and many other stuff that you would like to um, the application to call on so you are, that is uh, you are actually injecting into the constructor um, uh, services collection and uh, you are actually using that service in the application and then comes the uh, you are also registering the db context and any other framework service that you might call on from time to time and then comes the configure services method uh, configure method configure method is actually you are configuring the middleware pipeline or resource pipeline uh, which is very which are small components but you know they are actually um, building um, um, you can say a collection of uh, small applications through which the request passes and then the response is um, sent back to the browser to the ASP.NET Core server. One of the uh, some of the applications, some of the middleware may be like you know developer use developer exception page or uh, use static files. So developer exception page we have seen that it actually creates a developer exception page um, and it uh, when the mode is in uh, when the we are in the development environment whereas if we are in the production or non-development environment it produces an error page it returns a different error page which does not contain any debug information and then comes the use static file so that use static file middleware is uh, a middleware to serve the static page static html css or javascript file now one thing about the middleware is that you know middleware pipeline uh, it can it the request passes through many of these middleware and the first middleware that is ready that that can 
um, actually work upon, act upon the request is what handles the request. The other uh, middleware just let it pass without any change in the application in the request. So once the it meets the middleware that can handle its request, it handles the request and all other middlewares down the line are bypassed. They are not called for. They don't see that uh, you know uh, the middleware up the pipeline has handled it and uh, it is returned back in the same channel and to the ASP.NET Core server and then finally to the browser to render. Now this is in short about the startup file. Now in the startup file we just saw that the startup file uh, what it does is that it returns a response which is just a static file. But what about the HTML response that needs to be returned? Uh, so for that what we have got the razor page template. Now the razor page is the uh, backbone of uh, any .NET Core Web API. So razor is actually it has got a CS HTML. So it has got a C sharp plus HTML combined in one file. And this razor template ensures that you can write C sharp code as well as HTML on the same file. And this uh, it has it works with a couple of uh, with, with quite a few number of page directives the most important among them are the page directive at page directive at the top followed by the at model directive now the at page directive um, says that the return value the browser view has to be a razor page which is uh, which actually uh, renders the output to the browser through the execution of the razor template and at model attribute is which we have seen that it actually links the razor page to its page model. And what is this page model? Page model is the class code or a code behind file to the razor page. Suppose the razor page is privacy.cshtml. So the um, its code behind or the page model will be uh, privacy.cshtml.cs, which is actually in the project structure if you have seen the project structure it lies just below the uh, cshtml page or the razor page now this page model is uh, uh, this uh, suppose it is a, a privacy page model um, i mean which is linking the privacy uh, razor page so it is privacy uh, page model now it derives from the base page model class and now then there is a um, there is the um, uh, what you can say that um, it is a um, page handler methods now page handler methods are get or post or put or delete methods now page handler methods are what uh, returns a page depending upon what is the uh, if it is a just a void it is returning a void uh, value that page handler method say on get method returns a void that means it is returning a razor template to be executed to return to the um, browser and and other times it returns a i action result now i action type could be uh, redirecting to another um, web page okay and uh, so now that is about the page handler method so how does the um, in case of uh, the html response to be returned how does the message flows how does the request flows now the request flows like uh, when the request comes to the browser uh, to the asp.net core server it actually it is routed through all the pipelines in between to the routing middleware now routing middleware actually looks into the um, um, route and it finds a matching razor page and it invokes that razor page and it uh, goes to the page model of that razor page and when it looks into the page handler method it executes the page handler which actually renders the response which travels through all the um, middleware that he has it has passed on downstream and going upstream it uh, uh, bypasses all the other middleware and it, it it passes through the other middleware lets it pass through till it reaches the asp.net server and then on to the browser to render. 
and that's in a nutshell how the request response um, is carried on in a um, ASP.NET Core application.